Uh, what's good? It's your boy Critical. Critical, I am on all streaming sites. Heartbreak Crit is my alter ego. You're now tuned in to 20 Questions with Weezy. What's going on, man? Are we starting right now? Are we starting right now? <laughs> what's good? I'm chilling, man. So it's Christmas Day. Yeah. You know, we chilling. Uh, had to get you down here, man. What's What's, what's going on, y'all? So look, it's your boy, Critical I Am. You know what I mean? Like you said, on all streaming platforms. It's another episode of 20 Questions with Weezy. You know how we doing? Uh, had to get them all the way here from that. Um, appreciate you, appreciate you. You know, uh, yes, I am eating some banana pudding. I ain't gonna lie, it's Christmas. It's fine. Oh, it is. How it is. How it is. You know what I mean? Authentic. You might as well sponsor. <laughs> Pet, Pet might as well sponsor you. Man, Joe. <laughs> boy. Hey, that's the goal. But no, so... So what's going on, man? How you been? I've been good, man. Just trying to get out the mud, as always. Get out the mud, okay. Okay. So, so I want to take it back. Take it back. Um, when did you, when did you start making music? Or how did you get into music? Uh, believe it or not, I've been doing music since like, <laughs> Seventh grade, sixth grade. Yeah. I'm gonna just say eighth grade. He's gonna round it up and say eighth grade. Uh-huh. Um, I met my boy Nick Trice in the, in the sixth grade, and they was already doing their thing. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Nick, Trey, Josh, stuff like that. And um, one day Nick just asked me if I'm gonna rap. Mm. And I looked at him and said, Look, but I can't rap. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was, was like, you scared? I wasn't necessarily scared. I just didn't rap at all. I hadn't wrote a single lyric in my life. Okay. And he was just like, man, look, I'll finish it for you. You know what I'm saying? I can write for you. Things like that, blah, blah, blah. So it's like the first like few months, I was like writing like four bars and then nigga like write the, <laughs> the next okay. four. Or okay. I do like the whole fucking eight bars. Right, and, right. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't even, I was too good of a kid back then. I wasn't even accustomed to my raps. This nigga mm. Nick went back and was like editing my stuff with cuss words. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, after like four months though, I was just doing it on my own from there. Okay, so high school. Oh, um, you no, know, I went to high school, which you did Harding. Harding, you know what I mean? Oh, um, that was some fun times, boy. Uh, fun times. Because I remember I was rapping. <laughs> Gone off the fruit punch. Gone off the fruit punch. There you go. Don't, we're not gonna speak of that song. Had the whole, <laughs> had the whole school rocking. To yeah. be real, I ain't even. My first time ever recording a song, like actually recording a song in the studio, was your studio. Dang. That was what's, what year is that? Sophomore or junior year? That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. A long time ago. That means you've been engineering for too damn long. Too long, man. <laughs> hey, hey, look, look, look. I was mad with the plan back there. You know what I'm saying? I wanted it. I was growing it. Had um, to, definitely. Because engineering and producing wasn't even in my thought process at that time back then. Right, right, right. So, so through the years, through the years, you just kept rapping. Yeah. Kept, kept rapping. Artist. Kept being an the artist. Then you approached him. Mm-hmm. Like, too easy. I want to engineer, bro. Mm-hmm. And man, I remember it was times, boy. It was it was times, boy. It was times, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm younger than you. Correct. Like yeah, I, I, I. So I'm younger than you. I mean, I'm teaching you how to record, how to engineer. You know what I mean? Produce a little bit. You wasn't on beats like that then. Um, and then you took the steps to get to where you need to go now. So, for me and you, it's it's been a journey. Definitely been a journey. <laughs> been a journey. Though, it has not been a sprint. I know some people, they can just, uh, it's going to happen in a year. You right, know what right, I'm right. saying? Right, right, right. Okay. Didn't happen like that for me. Right, right. <laughs> Definitely. I don't, I don't think it happens for nobody, for real. I really don't think it happens for nobody. Um. So, during your process of recording and whatnot, you know what I mean? You was learning the game. Mm-hmm. You was learning how to engineer. You was learning how to really critique your sound. <laughs> As an artist, how important is it 
for an artist to know how to record themselves. Interesting. <clears throat> a long time ago, I would have told you it wasn't that important. Dang. Ooh. <laughs> but now, I'm going to tell you, I think, I think it's pretty important. Um, it's important, okay. For most, it's important. It depends on how you think about it. I think it's important. It, I'm going to give I'm be devil's advocate and give both sides. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's important on one side because, I mean, most of the time, an artist's biggest um, obstacle to overcome <laughs> is finances. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> I mean, I've had people come to the studio and record with me who wrote, who got like a seven hour studio session, was writing for five hours that's... and only recorded for two. Yeah, that's not a bad thing at all because people not, they, they like that vibe, so right, that's fine. Exactly. But at the same point in time, that's like two hundred dollars. He paid me two hundred dollars to write, <laughs> essentially. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And then the rest of it was to record. So it's one of the things to where if you got that at the crib, you know what I'm saying? You can you can really like get it down pat. You can write at the crib, at least write at the crib. You know what I'm saying? There's some people mm -hmm. who get to the studio also and the, the, they'll have their verse like prepared to rap. Like they might have already wrote it, but when they get in the booth, it's like they can't really like get it out, if that makes sense. And again, that's not a bad thing. I feel like that's why I said both sides. An engineer's job is, in my opinion, to help the artist, coach the artist do it, you know what I'm saying? Help them develop all that stuff. What? By the same point in time, time is money. So for the artist, they might be like, dang, man, like I'm spending all this time in the studio. I'm only doing one song. It took me what? three hours to do one song, you know what I'm saying? So hey. it's like, I think it's important. I think you should just do both. I think you should have that at the crib to practice. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like practice your sound, <clears throat> practice recording, practice getting it down, writing, stuff like that. That way you can do what you need to do. Okay. And then when you go to the main studio, you can lay it down. In and 20, smooth, 30 minutes. And then you can ask the engineer, right, right 20, right, 30 minutes. Right. right and you okay. can ask the engineer like you, you know what I'm saying, or myself, um, any critiques, any areas that I could work on or stuff like that. But it's small tweaks, not like, Major tweaks because you might you might get two hours record an hour and fifty minutes and I was right. like even if he wanted to help <laughs> right you know I couldn't saying? right you yeah, couldn't because time is money and we got to the important. studio I'm gonna say it's important to be on studio okay cool I mean cool. Um, like so recording. yeah recording wise so you ain't gotta <laughs> technically get a big studio mm -hmm. not like that you just need something small correct that way you can practice practice, yeah. practice makes it perfect you know I mean? definitely yeah. understand that so. Um, you learn how to engineer, mm -hmm. then you dabble in some beats. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, what was that process like for you? The engineer or the beats? No, the beats, the production side. Uh, I'm still like working on the production side. Okay. Um, not because I'm not good at it, it's because All right. I never took it that serious. Okay. Like I'm an artist first, engineer second. Mm. Producer third, essentially. Okay. So one of the things to where it's like, I definitely can produce. I produce for myself now on most of my stuff, mm -hmm. but get it's. I feel like you have an advantage if you can learn how to play the keyboard. And really? I feel like, in my opinion, really? and I feel like. Don't get me wrong. You can make beats. Okay. Without playing the keyboard, because F a studio, click, 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 click. As yeah. long as you got some yeah. rhythm, you can make yeah. a beat. Hey, right, but, right, right. Real talk. Yeah, but for people with minimal like minimal ideas or some people who aren't as creative or they're not it's not as easy for them to make a melody, if you know how to play the keys, I mean you can play anything, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and turn it into a melody, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, okay. <laughs> so okay. songs you heard on old songs or remixes or shoot, church songs or just anything you just know how to play, you can turn it into a melody. And it's a lot easier to be melodic when you know the right notes to hit. Okay. The right scales, or a lot of people they learn one scale and then they can only make a song in that scale. Right. But you know what I'm saying. But um, that's it. Versus a keyboard a person can do it in all scales because they they know the scales. Okay. So it's but <clears throat> I wasn't blessed like that. I don't know how I play the keys. Okay. I okay. can play a few chords. <laughs> that's, that's all you it. need though. That's about that's it. All you so, need. You know what I mean. Um. It was a little bit harder for me to learn the process. Right. Um, did it Did it take longer? I mean, like, like is, is being a producer hard? Is it being easy? I mean, like, because I know a lot of people be like, man, I, I can make this. 
I can, I can, yeah, but you ain't doing nothing. I, 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 I think between, if I had to pick between doing. the three artists, producer, engineer, mm -hmm. and which one's harder? Mm -hmm. Engineer, the engineer part is hard. Mm -hmm. And then the producer is probably the hardest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, you're the one that's like, you know, you're the one that's like, you know, you're like, you can know all the technical crap in the world, but if you can't hear it, right, you, there's nothing you can do about it. The creative side. <laughs> Not even the creative side. I mean, literally hear it. Like, there are some people, like, you know, some things only got to be changed by, like, 1 dB, 2 dB, like, right. 5 dB or something like that, okay. which is not even, it's not even a full 1. I mean, I said right. 1. Point point, 1, point right. 2, point okay. 3, point 4, okay. point 5, stuff like that. <laughs> okay. And those minor tweaks, Make a people like us seasoned engineers or you we can hear that change right. okay but if i change 0.5 in front of a in front of an artist right. he'd be like i don't know what you just did right <laughs> I, can, I can mute right. it unmute it mute it unmute it he won't hear it and i mean that for another engineer as well you know what i'm saying they won't okay. necessarily hear that but the more they engineer the more they practice and the more they do it and develop their ear they hear it that's right. something that again just happens over time okay. you know what i'm saying and it's, oh. a lot, it's a lot of technical things you gotta know and we're producing Excuse me. We're producing. It's kind of more simple. I feel like you need a, you need a, you need a melody. <laughs> you need some drums. You gotta be able to catch the tempo and sense it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? For the mm, most part, that's it. No, I ain't, it, 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 it's it's behind it, but that's like the main things you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? At that point, with the, with the ability to be able to make it sound easy. <laughs> I mean, you make it sound easy. It, I, Today it is easy. I own a machine. <laughs> okay. I can I can tell a kid right now. Go get a machine. Mm -hmm. If he studies the machine online for a day, a whole day, like right. eight hour shift, he'll essentially know how to use the machine. What? Pretty well. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then all he has to do is go to Splice. So okay, hold <laughs> on. Yeah. Before we get into all that, yeah, we get into all that. How many years did it take you to actually? Get good at uh, making leaks, like again. So I've been dabbling with him. I, I'm like, I'm twenty. I'm twenty nine, by the way. Okay. I've been dabbling since I was like, I'm gonna say like twenty one. I'm producing. So eight years. Um, but it, I'm not gonna say it took me eight years because I'm gonna. If I had to be realistic and be a hundred percent honest, I'm gonna say probably minimum a year, maximum two. Only because. Mm. <clears throat> only because I dabbled a little bit when I was 21 and I stopped for like two, three years. Okay. I dabbled again later on for like six months and then I stopped for a little while. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But then two years ago, when I basically but then left yeah. my job to work for, to do music full time or whatever, yeah. I actually took producing literally serious. Like, I said, you know what? Yeah, but you had, you had people. Along the way to help me. That's true. And everybody doesn't have those people. You right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So right. I, it was me. I was already seasoned in the game. Definitely. So I had so, Ty Well. <laughs> so it was it You showed me the most. I mean, I probably uh, like 60% of my producing skills. <laughs> right. I yeah. learned from you. Right. So Yeah, cause that, that plays a big part because I know when I was coming up, yeah, I had mentors mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I've been making beats since I was eleven. I'm twenty six. <laughs> That's a long time. I've only been, besides you, I only been getting like small glimpses of help. So what I mean by that is right. like, like, um, Jr. Obviously, we all know Jr. You know what I'm saying? He good. Oh, wait. He came. In. Some people may not know who Jr. is. Who yeah, is Jr. Hey, producer. Shout out to Jr. Man. Hey, yeah, Jr. He going crazy. Um, he cold. My last project, cold. Bad Decisions, <laughs> track number one. He produced that. Cold. Us. Cold. Um, smart guy. He uh. Show you bits and tricks of the trade here and there. And you're like, okay, oh, okay. okay. Uh, flip samples, things but like that. He doesn't play. Doesn't play. Doesn't play. And he's hard. So that's, that's what I said. You don't have to know. No, I said, it makes it easier to start a song. So like for okay. people like us, we got to go in and click the note in, click this, click that, click this, click that. Do that sound good? Um, move this, move that. What? Person who played the keyboard. Okay, okay. Right. Good. Play it. You know? Right. Like me. Quantize. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be moving. It's good to go. Literally. I'll be moving. But... You? I don't, I think with me, like with that, like I'm just so used to it. Mm -hmm. That's only because I really wouldn't have been used to it if I didn't go to New Haven and yeah. take a keyboard class. Cause I was in band my whole life. I was in band two years. Yeah, no, I mean, I was in band my whole life <laughs> from six to 11th, really. And then I got to keyboard class. 
But I wasn't on no trumpet or brass yeah, or keys. Yeah, I, I was always on the drum. <laughs> but I know when I took that keyboard class, it changed my life ever. And how many beats? <laughs> how many beats? So, my, my, like I said, it's definitely an advantage. And like I said before, okay. besides you, Vice, Vice. Hey, shout out to Vice. Hey, dude, Vice going crazy. I think he's 20 and he probably the. Hey, he cold. Time, the 20 year old I remember my life. He cold, G. He cold. <laughs> hey, he crazy. He don't lie. I got a song on my new single I called Judge Me. He produced that one. Okay. <clears throat> he nuts. Oh, um, crazy. But yeah, uh, it's not easy. It's just time. one of the easiest. Like I said, you put in the time, you can learn it. Okay. Um, at the end yeah. of the day, it's the easiest to learn, like, technical wise. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, at that point, all these career choices, though, engineering, mm-hmm. producing, Artistic, like artistry, yeah. Creativeness is what's gonna take you to the next level. Okay. Like I said, I, I mean, I'm, I'm ranking them in terms of like how hard they are for like skill, like what? to learn. Okay. As in, like, how about I say? For you though. Yeah, for, for me. For you. For you. Art, uh, engineer, <clears throat> art, art, producer, artist. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, artist is probably the e- people say it's the easiest one because all you gotta do nowadays, you get a good beat that bang. You got a good engineer. And right. you can rap on beat again. Rap on beat. It's right. not as simple as you think. For it's not as simple as it's not, it's you not. would think it is. It's not. It is hard. <clears throat> rap on it beat. Is hard. You do all three of those. I mean, there are only three things you really got to do as an artist. You see what right. I'm saying? Right. And artists, artists. No offense to myself. We have got to do it myself. But for most artists, they have a lot of people that's helping them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like oh. when you're a producer. I mean, you don't really have as much help, but you got the internet. The internet is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was on Free Loop 7, it wasn't all these um, tutorials, G. Right. That. Look, Joe, when I was on <laughs> FL Studio 7, Soulja Boy was just coming out. You know what I mean? But I had the program before Soulja Boy was popping. And I was learning. How I learned, I read the whole manual. <laughs> <clears throat> the whole manual. No, nah, Joe, I, I read spent, the I manual. I hours on YouTube, but, YouTube. But YouTube, Google. hey, it helps. Like, I still learn stuff. Man, don't be afraid to uh, tap into these, like, seminars or ask yeah. producers or engineers for help hey. and stuff like that. Because I tapped into a seminar once um, by a dude named Bricks the Man. You know man. what I'm saying? I did his seminar. Man, I ain't even going to hold you. I, thought I was already decent at producing. But after I tapped into that seminar, I learned. I've seen this stuff before on YouTube. But for man. some reason, seeing it in, like, a constructive, like, Chris chorus type of atmosphere, I I got it. it. It locked in from that point. You know what I'm saying? And I've been yeah. doing good ever since. But mm, that's what's up. Okay, so to the artist side of things, mm-hmm. uh, you are an artist. Um, how many how many albums do you have, bro? Huh. That I count, or how many do I have? <laughs> that's that's out on the streaming platforms. Cause I know. I know. I have three albums on streaming platforms. Three albums? Because I know what, a couple of years ago, we were working on one together. Yeah. And I have Bad Decisions. Okay. Which I, don't, I mean, I, I don't want to start with that one, but. No, yes, I <laughs> If I do it, my In most order? recent. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, no. okay, okay. Don't do the most recent. Start yeah. from when you actually drop. Broken Conscience. <laughs> All right. My first album ever. Okay. My first time putting the actual <laughs> constructive project together from front to back. Okay. And um, I like it, but it's trash to me now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, my, it was, Why? Uh, Why? It was the first time I um, I just didn't like, it was a couple of things I didn't like. I recorded them myself. Um, didn't mix them myself. I did mix them myself for practice, but I did take it to other engineers to try to get them to mix it too. And it still wasn't necessarily to my liking, but Man. it was good enough. So I put it on. I got it mixed twice, by the way. Twice? Got it mixed once. Wasn't a fan. Took it somewhere else. Got it mixed again. It was okay. at least slightly better than the other one. Okay. So I just ran with that. Okay. And um, that's when you really dove into the engineering. That's when I actually, I already was recording myself. That's when I right, really right. dove in. That's when you dove in. in. When you dove um, in. All right. Uh, Bad right. Decisions was also da- a little bit dated in terms of the content mm-hmm. I was putting out. Like, right, right. lyrics, I was really into my, like, conscious hip-hop stuff. Which, right. I, I ain't gonna call that dated, but I'm just saying. Right. But I was doing was kind of dated. Okay. okay. The next one was, I'll take apologies later. 
that's the one that you was helping me on stuff like Pause. that. And I was, yeah. that was my first time Pause. I ever. I still ain't got my points. <laughs> I ain't got, hey, y'all, I ain't got my points Wait, bro, on this well, project this yet. wasn't even around yet. I was, I was using something called, Bruh. like, Can I or something Man. like that. So they didn't even have no, like, points or nothing like Doing that. Doing me bad. I had to, yeah, I had just started getting into <laughs> BMI bad. and all that stuff. So I wasn't even seasoned enough to know Bro. that stuff. But I didn't know. And then after that. Speak on that, though. What? How important is it for the artist to actually have a BMI and and oh, yeah, really yeah. important. You never know when you're gonna pop, and you never know when your songs are getting played. And like I said, uh, BMI or ASCAP and like sound scan and stuff like that. Can you can you tell them what they are? Yeah, BMI is basically <clears throat> the best way to explain it. Not like saying like dumb it down, but the best, best uh, way to explain uh, it is uh, they go get your money essentially. Okay. So the streaming sites like DistroKid <clears throat> so and TuneCore. Um, you're not at masters. They get your money for you from like the streaming. You know okay. what I'm saying? So like, could you upload it on those distribution channels and they distribute your stuff to all these places like Apple Music, Spotify, etc. Right. And BMI gets other money. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, if it's the on the radio is somewhere, the radio. Oh, if it's yeah. on TV somewhere, if it's on a podcast, anywhere else, or anywhere that's outside of streaming, essentially. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What BMI does. Sound scan is kind of the same thing. That's coming from more of like DJs though. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, okay. Yeah. It's important to have auto. Cause like I said, my first time ever doing it, ever. I think it was, um, I put all my songs on there now, but in the beginning, my first one was an EP I did called Mind Blown. Okay. And um, <clears throat> my first check off that, the next quarter was like, <laughs> it wasn't a lot. It was only like, um, like $150 or something like that. But, but it was $150. I had no yeah. idea what's coming. Right, so but you day, made it. I did. You made it off of your music. Off so. my music. And mind you, this is outside of streams. Right, right. I mean, okay. my stuff was getting played in other places right. that I had no idea about. You know right, what I'm right. saying? And okay. they collect that money for me. So that is important. That's why cool. it went viral somewhere else. You have no idea. No and idea. BMI just gave you that bread. You know what I'm saying? That's so. smooth. You get a check. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Small little check, you know what I mean? It's not the hardest thing to do. Yeah, it's really not. It's really not. That's super important. I tell artists all the time when I work with them, like, all right, you need your BMI or ASCAP, you know what I mean? Especially now, too, because like, I don't yeah. want to do anything, no offense, for free all the way. So, like, right, right, right. sometimes, yeah. and you can negotiate a lot more deals with artists and producers oh, right. on the back end, right? <clears throat> which can help you up front. That's like, I, I, depending on how promising they see you as, right. you know what I'm saying? And bro, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. When when the artists come to me and like, ah, right, yeah, I got my BMI, I got my, I got all my paperwork, you know what I'm like, oh, okay, you serious? Because mm-hmm. a, a lot of artists that I run into, I mean, they be like, dang, well, what's that? I gotta get mm-hmm. that. But that's mm-hmm. cool. I still, I give them the game. Educate them. Yep. Yeah, educate them. You know what I mean? Um, and that's how y'all do it, because people may not know. Mm-hmm. They don't know. You know like I mean? said, you can negotiate a lot of things that way, bro. Like you can right. go to a producer, and if they really, really believe in you, you better, bro. I ain't got no mm-hmm. money up front. You know what I'm saying? But I do got a BMI. I'm willing to give you, you know, seventy five percent of it, right. so fifty percent of that, like was right. stuff like that. And they might be like, you know what? I got you. You know what I'm saying? Because right. it's not <clears throat> technically free. You right. know what I'm saying? But that means they really believe in you because right. they ain't gonna see that money for. It. A whole quarter, <laughs> like a whole, you know. Really, what I'm so, really, sometimes it'd be a year for real. Yeah, a lot of royal, right. a lot of royalties. They say on average don't get paid out till about ten months later. Yeah, literally. So, um, that's cool though. So, Dojo second album. Not second bad. album, I'll take the prize later. Uh-huh. And until recently, probably my favorite because how I constructed that front to back, how I switched it from kind of like dated music to current music. In just a year's time, you know what I'm saying? Um, right. Probably my, my favorite one. Um, my most recent album, I had like a mixtape in between there, but I ain't gonna mention that one. Uh, my most recent album was Bad Decisions. It's my first R&B project. Oh, and so you R&B? Um, <laughs> I'm all so you sing. I'm all the above. So you um, sing. You I do around? sing, but I don't sing. I don't let, let the world... <laughs> Note, I'm gonna let the world know now. <laughs> I cannot sing. Um, I can hold a note or a tune per se or right. a pitch, I should say. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I know how to hit the pockets. 
Okay. But I do not know how to sing. So, but since I know how to hit the pockets, we okay. all know what auto tune is. A lot okay. of people uh, overuse it and not overuse it per se, but they like really crank it up. I should say, right, right, and right. They use right. it for like melodic yeah. rap. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like little yeah. baby. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Little dirt stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. I use it for singing purposes for the most of the time. And when I'm not rapping, and um, it's more like blast or you know what I'm saying, like okay. you know what I'm saying. Tory Lane when he uses it, stuff like that. You right, know what I'm right. saying? But there's so many different ways to use it. Um, but yeah, I made an R&B project, my first R&B project. Again, I'm a storyteller. Okay. Not necessarily in the song. I am definitely in the song, but when I right. do like project, I'm a storyteller. Like it's gonna all make sense. It's gonna. Mm-hmm. Like you might not know it at first, but by the time you get to the end of the song, the end of the last song on the album. I just told you a story. You like, man, mm. you know what I'm saying? It's deep or whatnot. But yeah, that's my last project. I'm just doing singles for right now though. So okay. but yeah. Okay. So you're originally from Fort Wayne. I am. I am. Yeah. Okay. So what made you be up and move? To be honest. I've been putting it out for a long time. I mean, putting it off for a long time. Okay. I almost moved like twice before this. Oh, okay. The first time was going to be to Dallas, Texas. The second time was going to be to either Vegas mm. or, you know, Music City. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta type stuff. Mm, okay. um, what made me move, though, uh... I like explaining. I know you. I know you can stay in one spot with social media and stuff like that. But right, right, right. like I said, I also do engineering and producing as well. Right, so, and, so you gotta get into these rooms. Yep, and like it's not always about who you know, what you know. I mean, right. it's not always about what you know, it's who you know. And you can't always, no offense, meet people online only. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like it's a lot more right. easier when it's tangible. You gotta put in the groundwork. Right. So I thought I did. I did. Like I said again earlier, I mentioned that I didn't work for two years. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I uh, had a studio out on Coliseum called LF Studios. The Red. Okay. The um, Red? Yeah. It's right. Another uh-huh. name that me and some of my people had for it. Mm-hmm. But, um... What was you doing out there? Oh, engineering, producing. I had a label. Oh, okay. Um, Still have a label, but just more focusing on different things now. Went in, like, a different direction. But had a label and a studio. Okay. Um, so, you, so you ran a business? Ran a business, definitely. Okay. Business. Had people okay. like... You out there helping with sessions. Uh, Dewan Lowe is out there helping with sessions. Okay. Uh, Clarence Smith, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Okay. Had other business owners like Ormon Barron, Nick Trice. Uh-huh. <clears throat> we was out there just all trying to, Brandon McKinney, you know what I'm saying? We was all out there just trying to make a difference, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, make a way. Yeah. Business is uh-huh. separate conversation, definitely something that's also important. Oh, you know yeah. What I'm saying? Definitely. If you can manage it. Um, definitely. But yeah. why I moved was after that, I was doing that business for, again, like two years or whatnot. Okay. And I felt like I had reached the... the pinnacle. Reached the pinnacle. Yeah. All right. Of what I could do in Fort Wayne. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, mm. a lot of people, if not everyone, knows I do, I do music. Whether okay. they do or do not like it. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's up to them, but they know I do it. Uh, I had a lot of sessions going out of there. A lot of clients, I was able to, like I said, survive for two years out having to work a job. Right. But if I wanted to like get further, I feel like I needed to go somewhere else. You okay. Know what I'm saying? And and build there too. So um, you went further. Hmm? So you went further. Yeah, literally got up and <laughs> moved further. <laughs> so you moved to Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Uh started somewhere small before I made the big, big, big giant leap. Most okay. people, I know most people just go for gold. Yeah. But I just wanted yeah. to um I did know a few People who lived in Indy, so I just I say no, I'm just moved down there. Right, because um, Indy scene, Indy Indy music scene is crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, decent scene. I know, it's, I know it's, not a lot of people that's like crazy. Me, like crazy, crazy big. Yeah, but, but for what I was trying to do, because like I said, as an artist, I can really push myself online right, right, heavily. Right, right. So, okay. excuse me. When it comes to engineering and producing. You, I just need to be in a bigger city, right? Where okay. there's more, more people. In general, we got 200,000 to 300,000 people in Fort Wayne. It's okay. a million people in Indy if you count the outskirts. Okay. <laughs> 800,000 people if you just count the inner circle of Indy. You know what I'm saying? So okay. that's, two, that's three times the people, you know, four times actually people that's we got in people. Fort Wayne. So it's just about 
Yeah, exactly. So I, <laughs> the first week I was down there, I got in touch with people at Asmith Studios. Dang. And I was first week. First, literally first week. <laughs> yeah, walk in there. Yeah, I literally just walked in. Cause Azimuth is well, I didn't say it's walk, crazy. It was locked, but <laughs> right, 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 right. But yeah, right. I walked but, in. You know, the Azimuth is crazy. It is crazy. They had a lot of people. They had almost anybody you could think of recording that studio. You gotta, you gotta know somebody. Know somebody to get in there. Normally, you know what I'm what? saying. So I did. What? I, I did know an old uh, producer there. You know him. I think Zero. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, obviously zero. I had to mention Zero. Shout out to Zero. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and um, just talk to them about. What I was trying to do, what I was trying to accomplish, you know what right. I'm saying? And then they, um, after all that conversation got done and business stuff like that, they allowed me to engineer there. Okay. Um, because again, I didn't want to just bring people to my house. I just moved down there and don't really right, right. stuff like that. Of course. Yeah. No, so, I feel you. so now I'm basically in the process of building my network down there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So only been there about four months. So mm, how's that going? It's going pretty good. Um mm. It's going a slight bit slower. It was going extra fast when I first got down there, but a slight bit slower for like the last two months. Okay. Only because, you know, things like COVID and right, life, right. you know what I'm life. saying? Like okay. getting in the way of stuff like, stuff like that. But right, right. it's still going it's still going pretty smooth. Just again, just figuring out places to go to meet the people. Like it was I caught three spots instantly where they were doing like open mics. You know what I'm saying? So okay. just start with those places, perform my songs. Okay. And I end up, I end up performing my song to let everybody know, you know, I made this beat. Okay. Um, okay. I recorded this song, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I need someone to record, you know what I'm saying? How I mean, after the set type thing. Right, right, right. Okay. And then after that, I would just network. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. Okay. So, when you leave in the city, mm -hmm. do you think you ain't had a support here in the city? Hmm. Is that why you left? That's the question. Or, um, like, you just didn't think people rock with you? you thought people no, I'm saying yes and yeah. no. Like I said, yeah. in terms of business, how I feel about engineers, not necessarily producers, but how I feel about engineers, when you locked in with your engineer, for the most part, you locked in with your engineers. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So That's true. Uh, it's split between myself, you had clients, low hat clients, um, right. Wax, <laughs> Two Soul Productions, right. um, Zank, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You had new engineers coming on, like TZ and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Who's trying to get their own, like, Clientele, yeah. um, Maestro, my bad. But no, um, uh -huh. okay. It's a lot of engineers here. Plus, you still have Diddy tracks. You still have the number one soundbar. Uh, yeah, soundbar. My bad. Soundbar. Of the soundbar. The number one studio in terms of selling equipment. Anyway, Sweetwater. Right. Sweetwater. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So a lot of competition. <laughs> major lot competition of, here. A lot of. Lot so of comp um, you wasn't getting a new client unless either a they were new, b they wanted to record now and their normal engineer wasn't available. Okay. Or see the guy to an argument with the old engineer in the new studio. So or okay. you know, so so thing right. is, is you always had to bank on something else happened where happened. there was for you to get more clientele. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So okay. yeah. So it's kinda of like when you get a barber, you don't just switch up barbers left and right. You know what I'm saying? You get a barber, you gonna keep your barber unless either A, he on bullshit <laughs> or B. And they're going bullshit. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Okay, okay. So that's basically the okay. same thing. So, Sheesh. Um, Comparing barbers. Um, there are a lot of new rappers, up and coming artists, you know what I'm saying, that you can get in touch with too. Right. Like I said, I just wanted more of that. Um, but in terms of art, artistry, I think I got support. Uh, I think I got a lot of support down here. Uh, I might have thought I wanted more support. More support, but okay. But I also feel like at the same point in time, it's not, I, I'm not necessarily dogging the city saying they don't support people. You know, okay. it's more of like, I know what kind of music I make. You know right. what I'm saying? I know my lane. Right. And I know the type of music that certain cities have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. in my opinion, Fort Wayne has a nice, keen sound. They, they, they love to the draw to like the Chicago, you know what I'm saying? Detroit type Acting, sound. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. You right, know what right. No, you no, like no, what no. you like. Right. And right. I, I don't make that. <laughs> So for me, okay. it's a matter of, Fair you know point. what I'm saying, the songs that I do make that are kind of like in that lane, I'll definitely market to the people around here. You know what right. I'm saying? Because it's not just that lane here. You know what I'm saying? I'm just well, saying uh, majority, you know what I'm saying, it was that lane. So I um, had the support, but like I said, they knew I did music, always shared my stuff, things like that. But I needed to actually find my my crowd, that makes sense. I can actually okay. turn them into like, 
super fans, essentially. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, have you done any shows or opened up for anybody or? Down you know there. what I mean? No, just in general. <laughs> I really opened up for a lot of people. Opened up for Kurt Cobain when he came here a long, long time ago. Ooh, Kurt Cobain. Mm -hmm. I got drank in my club. It was one more person. Kurt Cobain. I honestly can't remember. I think it was the T.I. show. Mm. <laughs> but mm. other than those two, that was really it. Um, yeah. I was there too. Yeah, he was there. I was there. No offense to uh, like some of the places here, but... I find it kind of difficult to open up for artists because I'm not necessarily a fan of pay to play to an extent. Okay. Um, I am if it makes sense. Like, there's that thing in that, but they want to pay nine hundred dollars to perform for three minutes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm not doing that. I don't care if I got the best song that I think in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it ain't coming with like a meet and greet, or I right. can't get like a table to set some stuff up or something like that. Right. Because that's what I make it feel like it's worth it. If you can meet the artists in the background, like, oh, recently I opened up for um. I even forgot. He sang. Oh boy. He sang. Uh, he was at. Um, <laughs> I cannot Ooh. remember. Dang, bro. You was. Uh, you was taking pictures. I don't know if I was there. I go to everything. Is that? Is that? Um, flashbacks. <laughs> oh, pleasure, P. Pleasure, P. I'm sorry, OG. Couldn't remember your name. <laughs> but yeah, open up for him. That was different. You know what I'm saying? Like I like things hey. like that. Hey. I got to meet him afterwards. That night, afterwards. that night was different. Mm -hmm. That night was crazy. To him, and there was a lot of things that happened behind <laughs> the scenes with him as well. To open up some opportunities that I'm not speaking to on camera. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's one of the things where it's like, I like when it's worth it for yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to pay for that show. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so okay. that's it's that's one of the things where I wouldn't have minded though paying for it if right. I could get all oh, you like had that. Got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, okay. Again, okay. I would say to people, if you got your merch together, you know what I'm saying? Business cards together. Um, it could be worth it to okay. do the pay-to-play thing. Or if they're actually making it reasonable and you're paying $900 and you get like at least a 15-minute, 10, 15-minute set, right. that's a pretty decent amount of time. But I still think you should have merchandise and stuff because, yeah, no, again, definitely. they're there for the main artist. Yeah. They're going to hear you. But but you got to make them remember you. Exactly. And most of the time, yeah. you got you to you give them something to remember you. So, you're absolutely right on that. Yeah. Absolutely right. So at the end, of, like I said, uh, other than that, then the only people I really opened up for around here. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what's what 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 can we expect from Critical I Am in the upcoming future? I mean, I don't want to give away all my juice, you know what I'm saying? But no, uh, I know for a fact the main thing for me it was my main goal last year. Um, and I think I did good just towards the end of the year. It was a slight bit of slack. So I'm trying to do it again next year, but no slack at all. It's just, it's just discipline. Okay. Like when it comes to being on social media, when it comes to making songs and records, you know what I'm saying? Just doing shows, just being disciplined. My yeah. goal for next year is to give something new every month. I ain't gonna tell y'all what it is, you know what I'm saying? I gotta make you tune in to my social media. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Again, it's critical. Well, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so just turn social media and... Is that with a C or is that with a K? With a K. Man, I, with a I don't K. know, you right. know what I'm saying? I don't Critical know. I am with a K. You know what I'm All right, saying? make so, sure y'all follow him. If, you, if, you, if somehow you forget Critical I am, you type in Heartbreak Crit too. Okay, so, okay. Um, heartbreak Crit. Your Heartbreak Crit is a little... You breaking hearts out here? I am breaking hearts. Sometimes I got... You breaking hearts? Broke, God damn it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, jeez. <laughs> All of the above. You know, <laughs> All of the above. I'm in tune with my emotions. <laughs> Usually when I'm singing, I'm heartbreak crit. Usually when I'm rapping, okay. I'm critical I am. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So maybe I have a little TI or CIP thing going on one of these mm. days. And mm. come up with. But mm. then I forgot what you asked me. Oh, boy. <laughs> When we be talking, man, you be getting all track. I'm like, damn, man. Man, what are you asking me? Oh, you but no, nah, yeah. I remember now. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, tune in. Like I said, I'm going to have something new every month. Whether, whether you think it's going to be a song, whether you think it's going to be a video. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I'm going to have little small pieces of content in between the months as well. But I'm going to have something major releasing every month in mm. 2022. Mm, okay. So, yeah. So, big things happen. Definitely big things happen. Cool. Cool.
Man, well, I think this kind of wraps it up, man. You know what I mean? I appreciate you coming on. You know what I mean? For, me, um, for real. Appreciate y'all tuning in. You know what I mean? I gave this man some Pepsi. He ain't want no banana pudding. You know what I'm saying? I did want some banana pudding. You know, look a little yeah. suspect.